In the words of Dan Harris, the voice in the head is what separates us from animals and it's also what screws us up the most. This quote encapsulates the essence of Harris's book, 10% Happier, How I Tamed the Voice in My Head, Reduced Stress Without Losing My Edge, and Found Self-Help That Actually Works. Harris, a renowned news anchor, shares his personal journey of self-improvement. In his career, he was always under pressure to deliver breaking news, and the stress was taking a toll on his mental health. He was living on the edge until he found his solace in mindfulness and meditation. His book is not just a memoir, it's a practical guide for those who are seeking to tame the relentless voice in their head, reduce stress without losing their competitive edge, and find a self-help method that genuinely works. It's a tale of transformation, an exploration of the human mind, and a testament to the power of self-awareness. In 10% Happier, Harris combines personal storytelling with insights into meditation and mindfulness. He paints a vivid picture of his life before and after discovering mindfulness. He candidly shares his struggles, his skepticism, and his eventual acceptance of meditation as a practical tool for managing stress and improving mental health. Harris also delves into the science behind mindfulness and meditation breaking down complex concepts into simple, understandable terms. His approach is refreshing, devoid of jargon and relatable, making it a compelling read for both beginners and seasoned practitioners of mindfulness. But what makes his book truly stand out is his honesty. He doesn't claim that mindfulness and meditation are cure-alls. Instead, he acknowledges their limitations and emphasizes that they are tools to help us become just 10% happier. And in a world where we are constantly chasing happiness, that 10% can make a significant difference. As we delve deeper into this book, we'll explore the key lessons from Harris's journey and how we can apply them in our lives. So stay tuned for an insightful journey into the world of mindfulness, meditation, and self-improvement. Join us today as we delve into this insightful memoir and extract its key lessons. One of the primary takeaways from Harris's memoir is the concept of the voice in the head. Now you might wonder, what exactly is this voice? It's that constant chatter, that running commentary in our minds, which can often be our own harshest critic. It's the voice that keeps us awake at night, replaying embarrassing moments from the past or worrying about the future. The voice isn't necessarily a bad thing. It helps us plan, analyze and learn. But when it spirals out of control, it can cause an immense amount of stress and anxiety. Harris himself experienced this during his career as a news anchor, where the relentless voice in his head led him to a public meltdown. So, how can we tame this voice? Harris found his answer in mindfulness. Let's break this down. Mindfulness, quite simply, means being fully present aware of where we are and what we're doing without being overly reactive or overwhelmed by what's going on around us. It's about observing our thoughts and feelings without judgment. When we practice mindfulness, we start to notice that voice. We observe its patterns, its tendencies to wander into the past or future, to judge, to worry. And the more we observe, the less power it holds over us. We begin to realize that we are not our thoughts that we can choose not to engage with every single thought that pops into our heads. This doesn't mean we suppress or ignore our thoughts. Instead, we acknowledge them, let them be, and then gently bring our attention back to the present moment. It's like training a puppy, Harris says. As soon as it strays, we gently guide it back. And the result? A significant reduction in stress, an increased sense of calm, and the ability to respond to situations rather than reacting impulsively. Understanding and taming the voice in the head can lead to a significant reduction in stress. As Harris discovered, it's not about silencing the voice, but about learning to live with it in a healthier, happier way. Meditation, as Harris discovered, can be a game changer in managing stress and anxiety. Let's delve into this transformative tool and its role in Harris's journey towards 10% more happiness. Meditation, at its core, is an exercise in understanding the mind. It's about sitting quietly and paying attention to your thoughts without getting carried away by them. 
Many of us picture meditation as an attempt to empty the mind, but it's quite the contrary. It's about focusing the mind, developing a keen awareness of the present moment, and gently steering the mind back when it wanders. One of the key takeaways from Harris's journey is that meditation is not about achieving a state of eternal bliss, but about creating a space between stimulus and response. It's about giving yourself the room to respond rather than react, a concept that forms the bedrock of mindfulness. So, what are the benefits of this ancient practice? Well, meditation can help reduce stress, improve focus, and increase emotional resilience. It can help us cultivate a sense of inner peace and clarity, even amidst the chaos of our daily lives. These are not just abstract concepts, but tangible benefits that Harris experienced firsthand. But how do we incorporate meditation into our daily lives? Harris suggests starting small. Even a few minutes a day can make a difference. Find a quiet spot, sit comfortably, and simply focus on your breath. When your mind wanders, and it will, gently guide it back without judgment. It's a simple practice, but not an easy one. It takes patience and consistency. Harris also emphasizes the importance of a supportive community or a mentor. Whether it's a local meditation group or an online platform, having others on the journey can provide motivation and guidance. In the book, Harris demystifies meditation, making it accessible and practical. He shows us that we don't need to be monks or mystics to reap its benefits. We just need to be willing to sit, breathe, and observe our minds. Meditation is not about clearing the mind, but about focusing the mind, a small but powerful shift in understanding. Harris calls himself a fidgety skeptic, a phrase that resonates with many of us when it comes to self-help. It's a term that encapsulates the internal struggle many face when attempting to wade through the sea of self-help advice. With the myriad of available resources, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and skeptical about what actually works. Harris was no different. He found himself navigating through this maze, grappling with the skepticism that often accompanies the world of self-improvement. But his journey wasn't in vain. It led him to discover an approach to self-help that is practical, scientifically backed, and, as he puts it, made him 10% happier. One of Harris's key learnings revolves around the concept of mindfulness. Now, you might be thinking, isn't that just a buzzword? But for Harris, it was a game changer. Mindfulness, he found, isn't about eliminating stress or becoming a completely different person. It's about learning to respond to stress in a healthier way, about understanding the workings of your mind and not letting it control you. He also highlights the importance of meditation, but don't worry. You don't need to become a monk or move to the Himalayas to reap its benefits. Harris advocates for a practical approach to meditation, something as simple as focusing on your breath for a few minutes each day. Harris's journey also led him to the realization that self-help isn't a one-size-fits-all journey. What works for one person might not work for another. The key is to approach it with an open mind, a healthy dose of skepticism, and a willingness to experiment until you find what works best for you. In the end, the goal isn't to achieve some grand state of eternal happiness. It's about becoming a little bit happier, a little bit less stressed, a little bit more mindful. It's about making small incremental changes that add up over time. Self-help doesn't have to be fluffy or unattainable. It can be practical, achievable, and as Harris found, make you 10% happier. In conclusion, 10% Happier offers a fresh, relatable perspective on self-improvement. It's a narrative that effortlessly combines personal storytelling with insightful lessons about meditation and mindfulness. It's not just a book, it's a journey of self-discovery, a practical guide to taming that incessant voice in your head, reducing stress and finding a version of self-help that genuinely works. Let's revisit the key points we've covered. We started with the introduction to 10% Happier, a memoir by Dan Harris, which offers a unique blend of humility, humor, and insight. 
we delve deeper into understanding the voice in our heads, that constant chatter that often leads to stress and anxiety. The book beautifully encapsulates the process of recognizing this voice and the role of meditation in quieting it. We then discuss the role of meditation, not as a mystical, inaccessible practice, but as a simple, practical tool for better mental health. Meditation, as Harris describes, is about being present, being in the now, and learning to navigate the chaotic currents of our minds. Next, we explored The Skeptic's Guide to Self-Help. 10% Happier is a no-nonsense approach to self-improvement. It's about finding an approach that works for you, without the need for unrealistic promises or esoteric jargon. So, how does all of this come together? Well, the insights from this book can have a profound impact on your life. It's about being slightly happier, slightly calmer, and slightly more mindful. It's about progress, not perfection. It's about being okay with being 10% happier. As we part ways today, we hope that you take these lessons to heart. Remember, the journey to being 10% happier starts with a single mindful breath. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel and share your thoughts in the comments section. Until next time, Stay mindful.